Hello everybody and welcome to this new Gen tutorial. Today's lesson is on basic delay line principles. I'm using here very useful beat patcher that you can find in several help files in Max, and this is named Demo Sound. So you can either copy paste it from this patch for the future usage, or you can import it from uh, a help file. What I wanted to do, since uh, it's a very handy object, is to save it as a snippet. To do so, you will have to right-click on it, and then save snippet, and afterwards you will find it under the snippet menu, which is here. So you type demo sound, there you go, and you can drag it. Inside here you have many different options. You can use a sound file to test your patch. You can change sound file, or you can use an oscillator, a microphone input, a noise signal, and so on. So let's listen to this file. First of all, we will load the Jongli, which is a very famous breakbeat drum loop uh, inside Max. Let's loop it. So now we are going to send this file inside the gem patch. So here's the starting point with the gem patch. Let's just keep the input one for now, cause we don't have a stereo sound. And uh, we will load a delay object. So this delay object has a first argument, which is its maximum size, and it's expressed in samples. We might go for something like one second. Since here I'm working with 48 kilohertz, I will write 48,000. Now this delay line has two inlet and one outlet. First inlet is for the signal. Second inlet is for the amount of delay that goes from zero to 48,000 samples. And then the outlet is the processed sound. So what we can do is to send our sound to the delay object and then open a new parameter, which we will call delay and uh, give it an initial value of maybe, let's do it in milliseconds, so maybe 500 and then a minimum value of zero and the maximum value of uh, 1000. Then uh, we will need to convert this from milliseconds to samples. New object, ms to samps. And then we can use maybe a crossfader, an interpolator, to facilitate the passage from the dry sound uh, to the processed one. So a sort of a uh, dry wet mixer. For this purpose, we will use the mix object, which has three inputs. First input is one signal, second input is the other signal, and then the third input is the mixing factor. So we can create another parameter, call it mix, and uh, set it to 0 0.5 with a minimum value of 0 and a maximum value of 1. Here we go. And that's it. Now let's go outside of Gen to listen to our delay effect. But before using it, we need also to create the message boxes to access the parameters we need to tweak. So one message box, it's going to be delay $1. And the other is going to be mix $1. And then I will just connect them both to maybe float number here, but also here, because we are using milliseconds. So we can maybe be very accurate and express our delay in milliseconds with decimal values. And let's now listen to the patch. So here 
I have a dry sound. Now I will turn mix to one and it's the delayed one. We can appreciate what's going on if we keep an intermediate value in between the two. Okay, maybe we can add some additional steps to this patch. So the following step might be creating what we call a tapped delay line. So turning this delay object into something capable of generating multiple delay lines in parallel. And this is done by creating an additional argument with the number of taps. So let's say three. And you see that now we have multiple inlets and multiple outlets. So maybe we can have fun by using this single parameter called delay to generate more than one value. And we can have some polyrhythmic effect by using a, a non-rational ratio between uh, these numbers. And then we will have to collect these three output. Maybe we can go with a simple sum module. We will have though to use a preventive scaling of these three delay lines to avoid any clipping. Something like this. One main delay line, which sounds louder, and the two smaller one. Let's listen to it. That's pretty cool. So another step that we can take is finally adding a feedback chain here. So we will use a sum module here. We will take the output coming from the sum after the three delay lines, and then we create a feedback value with a minimum of zero and a maximum of 0 0.9999. So we will not have an infinite feedback, hopefully. And then we multiply it by the output of the sum coming from the three delay line. And here we go. Since there is already a delay buffer, we are able to create a, a feedback loop, which is not possible normally if we don't have uh, even the tiniest buffer, which can be a one sample delay line since we are in a digital domain. So here we go. When I have a delay line, I always like to have my cables like this, and you can do it by clicking Command plus Y or a Control plus Y if you are on Windows. Pardon, there's a mistake here because I wrote minimum instead of maximum. Let me correct it. Here we go. And I will now add my feedback value. Let's now listen to it. So very high feedback or zero feedback. Cool. Now finally, we can uh, add some fancy filter to have maybe a darker feedback effect by including in the feedback chain a low pass filter. First of all, we need a history, which is a single sample delay which allows feedback connections. So it behaves uh, similarly to delay, but it has a fixed uh, size. So once I've created history, I need to create an interpolator. So here we go again with mix. The first input of mix will be connected to a point uh, inside the feedback chain, for instance, uh, this outlet after the feedback scaling, and then uh, we will enter inside the history object, 
which is our one sample delay line, create another feedback loop. And this is basically the shape of a low pass filter of the first order, which will subtract uh, 20 dBs per decade or 60 dBs per octave. Then uh, we will add another parameter, which can be our cutoff frequency. Let's put it at, I don't know, like uh, 500 Hertz with a minimum of 20 and a maximum of 20,000. And now we need to scale this value, not only scale it, but convert it to match the boundaries of the control value of the mix object, which doesn't exceed the range in between zero and one. So since I am a bit lazy, I will go find it inside the max example and copy and paste it. So examples, gen, filters. Here we go. We will get soon to this patch to study some of these filters. Let's go to the simpler one, which is the one pole, first order low pass filter. And then let's copy this section here and we will paste it here. And now we have our cutoff frequency matching a range of values in between zero and one, which will let us use this mix object in an optimal way. Introducing an absolute value to control our frequency values and constrain them uh, into a set of only positive numbers. And then uh, we will convert uh, these positive values from uh, frequency values, which we measure with Hertz and we usually indicate with the F letter into angular frequency values, which are measured uh, with uh, radians uh, per second and they are usually indicated with the letter omega. And this is done by multiplying uh, our values by minus two pi divided by sample rate, because we are again in a digital domain. So we need to express these numbers in samples. And then uh, we will uh, compute an exponential set of values which somehow responds to the fact that uh, we map frequencies uh, on a logarithmic scale, also for perceptual reasons. So here we go, we will use an exponential function. And then uh, we clip the output of the exponential function to be sure that we will not exceed again our boundaries, which are zero and one. The last step of this modification will be to move this branch here and connect it to the output of mix. So per each feedback cycle, we will have also a filtered signal. And this will create a sound that will be progressively muffled, progressively darker, because we are subtracting frequencies at each cycle. So we add now cutoff, And here is another example. And that's it. Thank you for following this uh, second tutorial. I will see you soon uh, with the next episode, uh, which will be on modulation delays.